And now, live from the studios of Freedom's Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. It's the end, the end of the world as we know it, which isn't uh, that bad, and I feel fine, because uh, maybe it should be the end as we know it, and what have we known? Well, the world is, you know, whether it's flat or not is not really the point. The point was is that who got to say whether it was or not. <laughs> you don't get to have a say, man. You know, and that's one thing I want to I wanna talk about with Larkin, and, and uh, he has such a great mind on this, and, and is really, you know— been such a a guiding light on the path for a lot of people just to question real authority. I mean, you know, it's and what do I mean by real authority? I mean, you know, um force. People that, you know, oh yes, I am your ruler. I got a guy in a black robe over here says so and the guy standing over there in the blue suit with a gun. So I'm but what is legitimate authority? And why is it that we are so quick to not exercise our own authority our, on even our own lives and our children and to relinquish that to somebody else. There has to be something throughout history that someone like Larkin has at least thought about and maybe come to some revelation he's going to share with me. Larkin, help me out here. How do we get like this? Well, I think it's it's a combination. I think some of it is sort of wired into us as pack animals. I mean, a pack of wolves will have an alpha male in charge, and that's how they're structured, that's how they function. So I think there's, there's some sort of DNA leftover of we want to do that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't underestimate the power of the indoctrination that we're all put through to, to be that way, to be submissive and to look to a higher authority to control us. And, of course... What we want out of it is not to be bossed around and stomped on. What people want out of the authority is to be protected, to have someone else in charge. And schooling is a huge indoctrination process that, you know, the, the math, the reading, that sort of stuff, that kind of people forget that or who cares. What people actually learn when they go into school is that this is reality. There are two classes of things. Now, they may look like the same species, but there's this one class called authority, and it can do whatever it wants, and it tells you what to do, and your goodness is measured by how well you obey it. If you don't do what it says, if you do what it told you not to do, if, if you please the master, you're good. If you don't, you're bad. That is the lesson everyone learns in school. They forget all the trivia, they forget the capital of Uzbekistan, but they remember, I'm good if I obey, and they remember, the world is somebody else's responsibility. You know, somebody was, else has to be in charge. That was so, one thing that, you know, you, you, the book that came out that was Everything I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Well, so you don't, you don't hit, you don't steal, you don't, you don't, you know, aggress, you don't uh, take somebody else's stuff. And then it, it starts first grade. And then they teach everything you shouldn't have learned. And it's and it's and what you're describing is an indoctrination that is like intentional. You know? Absolutely. And you know, expand on that. Who who benefits from this intentional indoctrination and be more specific on the kind of things you would you would start to learn even in the first grade? Sure. Well, in the first grade, you're lear- you know, you learn you're not supposed to hit. You don't learn nobody's supposed to hit. You learn you, the subject class, the peasant. You sit there and you shut up and you do as you're told and you don't hit each other. The teacher, you know, back when we went to school, teacher's allowed to hit you. Teacher's allowed to take your stuff. Teacher's allowed to tell you what to do and boss you around. In fact, you better expect it because that's pretty much your life from the moment you step into the building to the moment you step out. Oh, good point. It's not that human beings aren't supposed to hit. It's that the peasants aren't supposed to hit or steal or boss other people around. But you do not learn that hitting is bad. You learn that hitting is bad for you to do. It's perfectly fine for authority to do. 
And wow. that is what people learn in school. There are two classes. They both look like the same species, but there is a master class and there is a subject class. And the subject class better darn well do what it's told because whether you are good, if you're a member of the subject class, whether you are good depends entirely upon how well you obey the master class. I mean, it's when you put it, nobody puts it in those terms when they talk about, oh, yeah, it's good to go to school and learn things. But that's what the kids learn. That's what everybody learns. And so when they grow up and suddenly they're not in school, they are so used to that setting where somebody else is in charge, there's somebody else that does their thinking for them, they're deciding for them, that controls them, and that they hope will protect them from reality and run things and be in charge, that human beings literally are trained to be incapable of acting as responsible adults. Because at what point in school are you supposed to be a responsible adult, acting like a human? You're not. You're supposed to be an obedient subject. So you step out of the school on that last day and you think, all right, now who do I bow to? Where's the new master that I have to please? You know, Where's there was, the- a, there was a, um, a statement that was done in an election campaign here by a gentleman. His name is Barry Hess. He uh, runs for libertarian governor here in the last few elections. And I remember him saying one thing that just really stuck with me. It's, I don't often re- remember quotes. And he goes, you know, I feel, and he was in a speech talking to the people. He goes, you know, we are conditioned to feel like like we we need to turn ourselves into somebody. We just don't know to who or for what. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and 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 I, and I understood it really resonated with the audience, too. It's kind of, it's not like they laughed or chuckled. It was more like a nervous, ah, damn, you know, he's right. <laughs> right. And, you know, so if I don't know who to turn myself into, you know, to whom do I, you know, bow? Exactly what you're saying is that it's a conditioned reflex that has taken taken our entire lives. I don't know if it took that long to instill, but certainly they have to keep reinforcing it. Right. And, and, and when they instill this at the beginning, when you're young, they're going, all right, all right, you know, there, there's levels of authority and, and, and there's always, you know, more levels. We can come up with more levels above you. It's a... It's uh, you thought it was just your parents or maybe you and you were second in line. Oh, heck no. Then you got your parents and right below them, maybe if even below them, you have teacher. Then the teacher's got an authority. It's the principal. Then you got the, you know, uh, the police and you got the government. You got, oh, I got to share this with you, Larkin. One of my first memories, I remember I was probably, oh, I had to be at least three, four years old. And we moved to Florida. My father got out of the Air Force, and we're here in Arizona. We met my mother. We go to Florida, and he says, this woman's going to be taking care of you now. Her name is Grandma. Now, Grandma, we're going to drop you off in the morning. She'll take care of you, come home, whatever. I've been staying with her for about a week, me and my two little sisters. It's about a week later and everything, and we're doing something, coloring, whatever. And she goes, oh, when your dad was your age. And I looked at her, and I go, you knew my dad when he was my age? And she goes, uh, yeah, I'm his mom. You know, I'm going, oh, oh nobody <laughs> clued me in on that. You know, they, they, I just thought you were a grandma. And I'm going, how do grandmas get, you know, how do I get a grandma? I knew other people had grandmas. At four years old or so, I remember thinking that the police issued you grandmothers. Okay. <laughs> well, they might pretty soon. <clears throat> well, you know, the point was, and of course it didn't really click you know how relevant or important that was until later you know even as an adult that i go yeah i used to remember how can a a a young child just pass me to hell just barely talking come to the conclusion that the police issue grandmothers how was that even freaking possible it was before they i didn't even have kindergarten they didn't have kindergarten when i went to school in the 60s it just started like my my little sister i think started going to kindergarten in the late 60s early 70s and first grade, you know, you, you, it starts. But even before that, I'm thinking grandmothers are issued by the government. And I'm going, how was that even possible? When we come back, Larkin Rose is going to help me, man. When does the indoctrination start? It's even before school. That was in the 60s. Wow. We need to know how they're getting into our head at even such a young age. We'll be right back with Larkin Rose, author of The Most Dangerous Superstition. We'll be right back.